Minerva's Medical Device PLM Design Control Medical device makers have to comply with FDA and ISO regulations. These regulations include CFR Part 820, Part 11, as well as ISO 13485 and ISO 14971 for risk management. PLM can enable compliance to these regulations in the area of record management, record control, corrective and preventative action, design control with design history files, DHFs, and material control. This presentation focuses on design control. The goal of design control regulations is to prove that you have designed a safe product and that it meets user needs and fulfills all the requirements. The specific FDA regulation that talks about design control is 25, uh, 21 CFR 820.30 and ISO 13. 485 section 7.3 design and development both expect documentation and records of design throughout the product development process design control uses some specific terminology of which I will cover here intended use is the stated general purpose or function of the device indication for use is the stated disease or condition that the device will diagnose, treat, prevent, etc. It is also a good practice to state the unintended use of the device. User needs are requirements from the user's perspective, typically broad statements that are difficult to quantify or measure. They use words like easy, simple, friendly, or better. For example, the device must be easy and simple to operate. To get user needs, ask questions like, how will the user or patient use the device? What is the use procedure? What is the device use environment? And many more. Design input defines all the requirements, features, and functions of the device. Unlike user needs, design inputs need to be objective and measurable. Some of, the, some of the design inputs are typically derived from user needs. Design inputs don't all need to be device specifics since they can also come from regulations, industry standards, and even marketing, market, market and competitive needs. When defining design inputs, always keep in mind how you will verify them, since verification is an important step in design control. Design output is a compilation of records containing the procedure and specification for the finished device. In other words, it's a recipe on how to build a device. This is also known as a device master record. If you gave someone the device master record, they should be able to build a device. The design output and DMR include things like bills of material, drawing for parts and assemblies, instructions on how to assemble and build a device, standard operating procedures, and much more. Last two terms I want to introduce are verification and validation. Although they sound similar, and are often misused, verifications relate to design inputs while validation typically relates to user needs. Regardless, they both are plans proving that the design input or user need is met. Careful consideration of how to validate and verify should be done as early as possible. The results of the validation and verification should be captured and stored and belong to the design history file. Since, is, since it is a regulation to have a DHF and DMR, the typical industry practice is to design and print, meaning to do the design and then print to paper and store in a physical binder. Some design and file, meaning that they store the electronic file into a file system that is structured to look like 
a DHF binder. Others use PLM created structure document records mimicking the design history file binder and managing the files in the PLM vault. To keep track of traceability of the user needs, design inputs and outputs, and their validation and verification plans along with the results, a common industry practice is to, is to utilize Excel spreadsheets. In all cases, this is a manual process that is very labor intensive and error prone. Even if the product is correct, having data that is incomplete or to the wrong revision can trigger problems with an audit. Unfortunately, this is the landscape of many companies, file systems, spreadsheets, and silo systems. Anyone can very easily see the inefficiencies, data duplications, lack of traceability, and opportunities for error. This is a picture of a design control full of risk. Minerva's medical device PLM running an innovator can be used to reduce risk and improve design control. As part of a larger solution, two elements are shown here, the DHF, DMR, and the traceability matrix. The structures of the DHF and DMR are created as templates. For a device, all the deliverables are defined. The deliverables include things like documents, requirements, test specification, parts, bills of material, etc. Each deliverable is then mapped to a location in the DHF and or DMR along with the rule that states when the deliverable is complete. This rule can be based on a workflow completion such as a release of the document or part, a user action or phase gate completion. The combination of these two items allow the DHF and the DMR to be created automatically as a result of users' work. Baselines completed DHF and DMR structures are created as a result of any change in a project or deliverable as well as a completion of a phase gate. The traceability matrix is a unified view of the design control. It utilizes the content modeling framework in an Excel-like format to map user needs, design inputs, and outputs to their verification and validation results. The key differentiator to Excel spreadsheet is that the traceability matrix is a structured document with relationships to the innovator business objects. As these business objects change, the traceability matrix can receive alerts and updates. For example, when a requirement for a design input changes, the change will be highlighted in the traceability matrix, notifying the user to review the validation plans or the verification plans and the design outputs. This is a summary of the DHF and DMR in the medical device solution. The template structures are created for the DHF and DMR. The deliverables and their corresponding closing rules, as well as, as where they need to be placed in the DHF and DMR are created. A project is used to instantiate the deliverables. As work completes on the deliverables, they are automatically placed in the DHF and the DMR. And when looking at the device, the DHF and the DMR can be reviewed. Instead of managing requirements as one big Word document, Innovator can manage each detail requirement separately. This is important since requirements can come from many different sources. Requirements can also be classified by type and can be used for user needs and design input. This is a depiction of how the traceability matrix is modeled as a structured document in the content modeling framework of Innovator. A user need can have many design inputs, both of which are represented as requirement business objects inside of Innovator. 
a design input can have one or more design outputs where the output is represented as many different types of business objects. A typical design output will be a part or a document, but can also be an FMEA or a risk analysis. A user need and a design input can have one or more validation and verification plans respectively. The verification plans are represented as test specification business objects in Innovator. A verification or validation plan can produce one or more results. If you would like to know more or would like a product demonstration, please contact Minerva.